Who's ready for a good laugh? This Bleeding Cool article should be a good start. Doctor Who, our prescription for a better Series 12 opinion. Series 12 of BBC's Doctor Who is finally in production. Not by the grace of God go I. And since it won't be on the air until 2020, that means everybody gets to speculate on what it will be like. I speculate it will be shit. Actually, that's not a speculation. That's a fact. Series 11 was practically a new show. I guess that's one way of putting it. It had a completely new cast. Yeah, Graham and a bunch of fools. New showrunner. Shut up, Chibs. New design. Don't forget the sonic dildo. And new composer. Composing? Is that what you call it? It was still Doctor Who. Okay, maybe this is just a trolling article. Same, but different. It did claim the name Doctor Who as if it was Doctor Who themed toilet paper, but perhaps too different for some fans. By that, you mean 99.9% .9 of fans. The biggest change, of course, here it comes, get ready for it, was the Doctor was now a woman. Really? You don't say. I hadn't noticed. I thought the Doctor was now played by Satan. Jodie Whittaker, the hateful, became the first actress to play the Doctor. Well, nobody mentioned that. Well, isn't my face red? At heart, she was the same character as the last 50 years. After suffering brain damage, but now in a female body. Well, golly gee. She was the biggest bone of contention amongst fans who didn't like change. Maybe if she didn't beat fans over the head with the bone and get ready for it right-wing sexists screamed and wailed on social media about the show pandering to political correctness and social justice warriors if it looks like shit and smells like shit you know the rest when series 11 aired the ratings were higher than previous runs despite fluctuating throughout the seasons people were curious then horrified then just sad the season was nominated for multiple awards and won a Rocky Award from my own Canada. Don't know what that is? Don't worry, we don't either. Two episodes, Rosa and Demons of the Punjab, were even nominated for a Hugo Award. Virtue signaling current year, yo. All together now. Everything must be as woke as possible. And yet, by season's end, there was a sense of dissatisfaction with the season. You think? Even fans who liked it sensed something was missing. Yeah, the absence of shit. They wished old villains had returned. We would have even taken the absorbal off by the end. Then Chibs did dirty, dirty things to the Daleks. Some fans wished former companions returned. Oh, Chibs, Rose isn't a lesbian. Others wished there was more continuity from the show's lore. Kind of hard since real Doctor Who wasn't a hateful misandrist. I think the reason the season wasn't completely satisfying came down to one thing. Oh, this should be good. There wasn't enough Doctor in it. No 13th Doctor would have been preferable. She was frequently a supporting character in everyone else's story. That should tell you something. Stuff was already going on with the characters, and the Doctor wandered in as a deuce ex machina. I wouldn't even give her that much credit. To solve everything, and glared disapprovingly at the evil forces of the patriarchy. We come away from Series 11 knowing very little about the Doctor. I think we know all we need to know. Down with the patriarchy, and death to white people. In past seasons, we came to know the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th Doctors intimately as their first seasons progressed. Largely because the actors didn't suck. We only had one special anniversary episode to meet the War Doctor, John Hurt, and the story was revealed very quickly what drove him and what tormented him. Comparing Jodie Whittaker to John Hurt is like comparing Shakespeare to those books that show kids how to poop, and I'm sure Chibs could even turn those into a fight against the patriarchy. Hell, we only had six minutes to meet the 8th Doctor again again in the short The Night of the Doctor. That short prequel to the anniversary special told us a complete story of the Eighth Doctor's journey and its end. Again, the common denominator is Whitaker the Hateful versus people that can act. Don't make me compare Jodie Whitaker to Paul McGann bleeding cool, because I'll do it. Yet yeah, this Doctor is still a bit of a mystery. Is she though? Is she really? Yes, fundamentally, the Doctor has the same core character no matter what he or she looks like. Until now, the Doctor is an alien who helps people in need throughout time and space. As long as they ain't white dudes, eh, Chibs? Still, every showrunner and every actor finds a variation and a story arc for the Doctor during their run. Remember the good old days? We didn't get even one for the 13th Doctor's first season. No, but we did get a lot of her lovely scrunch face of hate. Every previous season gave the Doctor a personal stake in the story. You mean fighting the patriarchy isn't a stake? That's screenwriting 101. Personal stakes for the main character reveal his or her true character. I'm not saying it again. They reveal a character's inner life and motivations. Still not saying it. Each season's personal arc revealed something new about the Doctor. Without that, the 
Doctor became a cipher, just an adventurer in a blue box. Good lord. That's why the moment where the Doctor faced a sentient universe that took on the form of a frog stood out so much. That says a lot. If the best thing you can come up with was the talking frog. It was odd. It was that. It was wacky. Oh, it was whack all right. And it revealed the Doctor's sense of wonder and loneliness at the same time. Of course she's lonely. She's a feminist. Where's that cat we all keep hearing about? Not to disparage cats. I like cats. Actually, let's start a GoFundMe to save cats from Whitaker the Hateful. It was the one moment in the whole season where the science fiction ideas were unexpected and high concept and revealed the Doctor's character. There should have been more of that. I guess we'll get a talking giraffe next season. Great work, Chibs. She had no arc of her own. Hate isn't an arc? There were hints that she might have a mysterious past unknown even to her. Well, she did forget how not to be a dick that she's still trying to run from. Yes, quality scripts. But that was dropped and never mentioned again for the rest of the season. Well, Chibs forgot. Don't forget. Moffat lies and Chibs is an idiot. She took a back seat to Graham and Ryan. I wonder why that was. Again, everyone send your prayers and wishes to Graham. He's going to need them. When she wasn't handling the science fiction plot, she was just their best friend, who was the catalyst to their arc. Again, Chips forgot about the arcs. Oh well, the season was their story, never hers. Nope. Graham helped make long-term fans much less suicidal. The show is called Doctor Who, not Graham and Ryan. Well then, let's make Graham the Doctor, and all will be good. Maybe he's been the Doctor all along, and he's just messing with Whitaker the Hateful. Or, Dr. Graham is just having a bad dream, and all will be corrected next season. Graham and Ryan got the bulk of the emotional story in the whole season. Their arc was already in place. Graham was a man in remission from cancer, which was barely touched on, who fell in love with the nurse while in hospital, which was barely touched on. He married Grace and began a new life as a husband and stepfather to Ryan, which gave Ryan many opportunities to make fun of the evil white dude. Ryan was a 19-year-old who lost his mother, barely touched on, and an absentee father. Dads are evil, yo. Chibs told me so. Raised by Grace and wary of this new man in her life, because he's an old white dude. The season saw Graham and Ryan gradually change as they went through each adventure. Did they, though? Ryan slowly comes to acknowledge Graham as family and his grandfather. Until the petitions come out from Dr. Woke fans, Graham comes to terms with the loss of Grace when he's confronted with a recreated version of his dead wife. Ah yes, the we hate single fathers and here's a talking frog episode. Ryan even gets reconciled with his absentee deadbeat dad. Again, dads are bad, yo. Ryan and Graham's arc was the best written part of the season, but that's not really Doctor Who. Well, that makes sense, because this wasn't Doctor Who. Instead, it's a boilerplate British drama and soap opera and not science fiction. There you go. See, Bleeding Cool? We can agree on something. All the science fiction plots of the season felt like stopgaps before the next part of Graham and Ryan's arc. I wouldn't even give them that much credit. Their emotional arc was given more time than the Doctor or Yasmin. Neither of whom got an arc at all. Well, I'm sure the lesbian arc is coming. Keep faith, little grasshopper. Give Yaz an actual personality and story arc. Good lord, this is gonna be good. Yasmin Khan is a young and incompetent equity hire community police officer who wants to do more without earning it. 2019, yo. She has loving and slightly annoying parents. Well, since everything was annoying, that's just par for the course. And a sister glued to social media, just like my haters. She decides to travel with the doctor because her family drives her crazy and she wants to do some good. Stamp out that patriarchy. Not the worst reason to be the doctor's companion. This doctor, anyway. But there are no stakes here because she sucks. She could just decide to stay home at any time. That would have been great. Graham and Ryan decide to travel with the doctor because they're in deep mourning for Grace, and that reason has poignance. Yaz just wants to get out of the house and neglect her equity job. Many of the doctor's past companions traveled with him because they wanted to see more. They wanted to be something bigger. They were unsatisfied with their lives. Sounds like most Who fans after series 11. Rose was just a girl living on a council estate, whiling away her time until the doctor shows her how much more there was out there. And if Chibs has anything to do with it, that will include lesbianism. She ended up living in an alternate universe, reunited with the father she never met, and becoming a guardian of time and space. I'm sure Yaz will get that too. Remember, equality of outcome, not equality of opportunity. Martha Jones was a junior doctor in a London hospital who became infatuated with the doctor and what he represented. God help us if Chibs ever gets a hold of that storyline. So far, 
Yeah, seems a little bit like Rose. Oh, no, she's not. Except she's a cop. An equity cop. Which is a callback to Bernard Cribbins' character in the Peter Cushing movies of the 60s. Don't bring that up, Bleeding Cool. Woke Doctor Who fans have no idea what you're talking about. She's such a blank. Oh my god, that description is amazing. That fans got excited at the possibility that she was bisexual when her mother asked if she was dating Ryan or the Doctor. Sigh. I'm not even going to go there this time. We have no inkling of Yaz's inner life the way we did with Rose, Martha, or Donna. A main character in a hit show should not be so underdeveloped. Well, a competent writer and somebody that can act would be a start, even in the episode Demons of the Punjab. Just do a search for my name and that episode, and you'll blush at the love I got, which explored Yaz's family history. She was not the main character. Bleeding cool, I thought companions weren't supposed to be the main characters. She was a supporting character in the revelation of her grandmother's secret history and how the family came to be because she sucks. Yaz's family history was a way to explore the history of the partition of India and Pakistan. Thin history lessons, courtesy of Chibs and Friends. But it didn't reveal anything about Yaz's character. Because she doesn't have any. She, the Doctor, Graham, and Ryan were only there to serve the plot. That should tell you something, bleeding cool. It's ironic that for all the victory of a woman playing the Doctor and the first female South Asian companion, remember... This is the modern BBC, which is only about categories. The season ended up neglecting both women in favor of mending the male companion's broken hearts. I keep saying it, these people will never be happy no matter what you do. Here's hoping BBC's Doctor Who Series 12 gives us meteor stories, and the Doctor and Yaz real stories. I'm sure we'll get a love scene or two, maybe with Rose. Come on, everyone. You know that's the way things are heading. And that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe, and make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube is deleting subscribers, and follow me on Twitter. And as always, everyone, thank you for watching, and have a great day.